cartoon-based video games have a long, shaky history. Despite crossing over into two things that most people growing up would like, there are a lot more duds than standouts. Sometimes you'll get a game like Battle for Bikini Bottom, which is received very well, but more often than not you'll get something slapped together, possibly even shoveled in as an afterthought crossover game that much rather would coast on name value, rather than creating a long-lasting impression. At least when games used to come in physical media, you can always buy it and play it anytime you like. However, in the modern age of digital platforms like Origin and Steam, this isn't always the case. This is the story of the Powerpuff Girls Defenders of Townsville. <laughs> The Powerpuff Girls have had a long line of games, both original and crossover in nature. Everything from Bad Mojo Jojo, to Chemical Extraction, to Punch Time Explosion, and even their inclusions in Fusion Fall and LEGO Dimensions. There are many games on Steam, and even though there are more games than time to play them, there are also a lot of games that you cannot buy. Unlike physical media, where if the manufacturer stops producing it, secondhand sellers can still keep the market alive, at least until there aren't any buyers or sellers available. If companies like Steam or their developers have access to a game and no longer wish to sell it, in most cases, there isn't really a way for you to get it, legally. It is 2013. Indie one-man developer Luke Snyder of Radiant Games releases a game called Bombcats, described as a physics-based 2D puzzle game featuring explosive cats. According to a web archive blog post, Radiant Games would get emails from different companies and publishers, including one from Cartoon Network. Stating in another blog post, I was lucky to have stumbled onto it because of one guy, Ryan Harwell at Cartoon Network, liking Bombcats and Inferno. Self-employed, pursuing his passion of game development for about 3-4 to four years at this point, he talks about having to weigh the options of if this is the right path for him. It is 2014, 9 years since the final episode of the original Powerpuff Girls, and a new CGI special titled Powerpuff Girls Dance Pants premieres January of that year. It seems to be received mixed the positively based off of the reviews I can find online. However, the relevant part about the special is that just a few months later, in March of 2014, a game was released called The Pop of Girls Defenders of Townsville. Developed by Radiant Games, it is described as a Metroidvania shooter, taking inspiration from games like Super Metroid and Defender, featuring melee and shooting action, as well as the original voice actors reprising their roles. Whoa, what just happened? and the ability to switch visual styles from the then-recent TV special and classic series. Luke Snyder, frontman of Radiant Games, describes development on the title as intensive. I started on it late July of 2013, and the original goal was to wrap it up in time for a late January release. I don't think there were many days over Thanksgiving or Christmas holidays where I wasn't working. Luke describes the process of working with Cartoon Network to be refreshing, if not invaluable. When I got back the voice recordings from Cartoon Network, and was hooking them up in the game and cutscenes, it became obvious how good the people at their end are at doing their job. The writer and voice actors are true professionals. The writer took my rough plot outline and actually made it into a pop of girl script. Then when I put together the pre-final boss cutscene, I would actually watch it way more times than necessary just because it was so funny. I also couldn't believe it was the real pop of girls bantering with Mojo Jojo in a game I made. Attempting to visit the Steam page would redirect you back to the home page, which is weird due to other games such as Dark Souls Prepared to Die Edition, Warfare Online, and The Facility, among others, being available as a page on the Steam client despite no purchase button. Browsing a translated web archive version, we'd read some of the key features, which seem rather standard for a game of this caliber. Playing as the three titular characters, boss battles, choosing between the two looks, and lots of combat. Getting into the game, it ran smoothly and I didn't know what to expect. Upon choosing my settings, game mode, and difficulty, I'd be greeted by a rather cool cutscene showing Mojo Jojo in a giant robot contraption, planning to take over the city of Townsville, and through this process, uses his machine to remove the knowledge of how the Pop of Girls fight. You would spend all of the game within four areas that you would explore gradually throughout the game, starting as Buttercup. Through these, you would not only get powers as you go, but you'd also get abilities such as flying faster, taking less damage, dealing more damage, and many others. You also have four different boss battles to correlate with each area, in which through this process, you'll find your sisters Blossom and Bubbles. 
I was surprised at how easy it was to grasp the combat, and I'd say it was fun to go through the areas and figure out where to go next, as some places would not unlock until you open up other areas. However, this game doesn't come without its shortcomings. Once you get the hang of the game, it can be quite the grind, as when you defeat enemies in one room, they'll come back if you revisit it, making navigating on higher difficulties tedious and repetitive, especially if you're going from one edge of the map to the other. The game tries to mitigate some of this by adding some save warps that heal you, and also a map that would indicate if something that would progress the game is still within that area. Also, while the game does boast lines from the actual voice actors, they do get quite dull to hear for the 12th time, given that all of your gameplay is combat. Despite that, I would still call this a good game, nothing groundbreaking or amazing, but an engaging game that would still be a solid choice to start your adventure into the Metroidvania style of games. It is tough to find the exact date of when this game was removed for sale from Steam and other sites, but judging from the captures on the Wayback Machine, it seems to be between March 15th of 2015 and April 18th of 2015. We don't have an official reason for its removal, however, there is one reason that was making its way around. We recently announced a Powerpuff Girls reboot coming to Cartoon Network next year, and we have new licensees, so we sunset the game to avoid any brand confusion. While this isn't confirmed besides this one source, it's not completely baseless. Cartoon Network would begin talking about rebooting the Powerpuff Girls as early as June of 2014 and given that it aired April of 2016, it fits the timeline of removing it to avoid brand confusion. The small but vocal community around this game was furious about this statement, calling it ludicrous and confusing, given that this would correlate with the new style quite well and that there wouldn't be any real confusion about a rebooted series and a very minor game. Some chose to take it out on the upcoming reboot, stating that it was another reason not to like it. Luke would go on to make more games, and Cartoon Network would release 5 mobile games based on the rebooted series and a toy pack for the game LEGO Dimensions. No PC game of the reboot has been announced to this day. A lot of people including myself aren't particularly upset because it seems like Cartoon Network took down a game that was incredible and now no one else can experience the greatest game ever. Because honestly, it was just a solid, unspectacular addition to the Powerpuff Girls franchise. I believe what people were really upset at is the reasoning that's going around about brand confusion and the reboot, which a lot of people already have negative feelings for. And that with digital media, now there is no legal way for you to purchase the game, support the developer, and support the show. The discussion page still has a very light pulse, with posts made even this year, specifically around bringing it back on Steam. Some are holding out hope, others are not, and while it is abandoned where it was archived and is available if you go through the Defenders of Townsville discussion boards to find it, and if you want, you can help preserve the little bit of history that is this game. It really makes you think about how cartoon video games are more often than not just treated as an afterthought, so if you're thinking about this, make sure to get it and spread the message around. So once again, the day is saved, thanks to the, the, who are they again? Oh yeah, the Powerpuff Girls. Take care, Alpha out.